Five philosophers enter a restaurant and sit down at a round table. None of them are in a particularly talkative mood this evening, so they're just content to think and eat. A giant bowl of noodles is placed in the middle of the table. This restaurant is a little odd. The server places one chopstick between each diner. Each philosopher can only eat when they have two chopsticks. The challenge is to come up with an algorithm that guarantees each philosopher spends some time eating. If you studied operating systems or multi-threading in the past, you'll probably recognize this as the classic dining philosophers problem. It's an analogy for multiple threads with multiple locks trying to access a shared resource. Let's talk about why this problem is important and what we can do to solve it in an RTOS. I believe that Dijkstra originally posed this problem to his computer science students in 1965 using forks instead of chopsticks, but since you can technically still eat with a single fork, I think it made sense to use chopsticks. In this episode, we're going to examine two important issues using this analogy, starvation and deadlock. They're both nasty bugs that can get you in real trouble if you're not careful about how you configure your multi-threaded program. In our analogy, the philosophers represent the tasks or threads. The chopsticks are the semaphores or mutexes used to protect some shared resource, and the bowl of noodles is the shared resource, such as a global variable, serial port, or in Dijkstra's original problem, a tape drive. Let's say that Sotawana and Confucius have higher priorities than the rest of the philosophers. They would each take the chopsticks to their left and right and start eating. If they never yielded the chopsticks, delayed, or got blocked, they would simply continue eating forever. Even if they put the chopsticks down, they would simply pick them up again immediately. The other philosophers would get pretty hungry. This is known as starvation. In this situation, some tasks never get to run or have access to the shared resource because other, higher priority tasks are hogging it. There are a few ways to prevent starvation. If you're running your program on one core, the simple solution is to make sure that your high priority tasks have some kind of delay or yield to the scheduler from time to time to let other tasks run. If you have a multi-core system, you might have the option to run high priority tasks on a different core. Or, as we saw in the previous lecture, you can have your high priority task only run when it receives some kind of notification from an interrupt or event. This allows lower priority tasks to run all other times. Another way to tackle starvation is through a technique called aging. Let's say that we have task A running at a higher priority than task B. Task A is hogging all the processor time. The scheduler, or another even higher priority task, can periodically check the length of time that all other tasks have been in the ready state but have not run. As the time increases, the priority of those tasks waiting is gradually increased. This can be on the order of seconds, minutes, or even hours. It all depends on how you want to configure the aging process. Eventually, the priority of the waiting task will catch up to that of the running task, and the scheduler will be forced to split its time between them. Once task B has accomplished some amount of necessary work, its priority can be dropped to the default where the aging process will begin again. Note that free RTOS does not use aging out of the box. It's something you would need to implement. Assuming we keep the critical section short and all the tasks have the same priority, there's still another problem we might run into. Let's create a simple algorithm to allow each philosopher to eat. A philosopher will pick up the left chopstick, then pick up the right chopstick, and eat for a while. When they're done, they'll put the left chopstick down, and then put the right chopstick down. That seems simple enough, and no philosophers will starve so long as they all take turns, right? Not quite. Let's say that just after each philosopher picks up their left chopstick, they're interrupted by another philosopher who picks up their left chopstick, and so on. Soon, all philosophers are holding their left chopstick. The algorithm for each philosopher prevents them from putting down the chopstick until they're done eating. Since no philosopher has two chopsticks and they can't put down the one they're holding, they're stuck. This is starvation on a system-wide scale, and it's known as deadlock. When you implement a simple algorithm like the one we just saw, deadlock is a very real possibility, but it can be tricky to debug as it may rarely occur. However, we can prevent deadlock with a couple of techniques that are considered best practices in concurrent programming. I wrote a simple sketch that creates two tasks. 
Each task takes two mutexes in order to do some amount of work, which we'll say takes 500 milliseconds in this critical section. When it's done, it gives the mutexes back and waits for a while. Task A is higher priority than task B. Task B also takes and releases the mutexes in reverse order. As you'll see, that's not very important, as deadlock can still occur if one task is waiting for the other to release a mutex. In setup, we just create the mutexes and start the tasks. Notice that I need to introduce a 1 millisecond delay after taking the first mutex in both tasks in order to force the deadlock to happen. If I don't do this, we may never see the deadlock. It becomes a theoretical bug that may or may not occur. Let's upload this to the Arduino. When we open the serial monitor and restart the ESP32, you can see that task A takes mutex 1 and task B takes mutex 2, and then the program stops. If we look at the code, we can see that task A is waiting for mutex 2 at this point, which is held by task B, and task B is waiting for mutex 1, which is held by task A. This immediately results in a deadlock as neither task can continue. I hope this illustrates why the use of multiple mutexes and semaphores can easily get you in trouble. The first way to prevent or at least catch deadlock is to never have a task block forever while waiting for a queue, mutex, or semaphore, which is essentially what we're doing when we use port max delay. Anytime you block a task waiting for a kernel object, you should have some kind of timeout. Here, I'll create a timeout of one second for any time a task tries to take a mutex. If the task times out, it prints an error message releasing any mutexes it might have taken and waits for a while before trying again. I'll do the same thing for the other task. Now, if deadlock occurs, one of the tasks should time out before the other and release any mutexes. This should allow the other task to grab the mutex to do its work. Let's upload and run this program. When we look at the serial output, we can see that one of the tasks times out, releases its mutex, and allows the other task to do work. From then on, it appears that neither task gets stuck again. Timeouts can help prevent total deadlock, but they don't solve all concurrency issues. Back to our philosopher's analogy, a timeout simply means that after some set period, each philosopher would put down their left chopstick and try again later. While likely rare, it's possible that all the philosophers pick up their left chopstick, timeout, and put them down at the same time. They would continue this process over and over again forever, as all the timeouts are now synced. This is an issue known as live lock. While the tasks have not technically been halted or blocked as they were in deadlock, they still cannot get any work done, as they're prevented from accessing the shared resource. There are a number of solutions to ultimately fix the issues of deadlock and livelock. Let's look at two of them. The solution proposed by Dijkstra involves assigning a hierarchy or priority to the chopsticks. To do that, we'll assign a number to each chopstick. Instead of picking up the chopstick on the left, each philosopher would begin by picking up the chopstick with the lower number. Or it could be the higher number. It doesn't matter so long as you're consistent. Now, if all the philosophers, starting with Frederick Douglass, pick up the lower numbered chopstick, only the fifth chopstick will remain on the table. Sorwana can't pick it up as she's blocked waiting for chopstick 1 to be returned. As a result, Aristotle can pick up chopstick 5 and begin eating. This will result in a chain where the rest of the philosophers can continue eating and Sorwana will eventually get her turn. Let's update our simple two-task example using this algorithm. I'll go back to the original demo with infinite timeouts to show that this algorithm does indeed work. In real code, you'll want to also include timeouts as they're great for potentially catching other issues. Task A does not change. Note that the order in which you release the mutexes does not matter for this algorithm. However, it's often considered good coding practice to release the mutexes in the reverse order in which you took them. In task B, we switch the order in which we acquire the mutexes. Note that in both tasks now, we acquire mutex 1 first and then acquire mutex 2. This is the same as picking up the lowest numbered chopstick first in our analogy. Just like before, we also release the mutexes in reverse order. Let's run this code. Now, task A takes mutex 1 first, and task B is blocked waiting for that same mutex. As a result, task A can take the second mutex and do its work. When it's done, it returns both mutexes so that task B can do its job in the critical section. This continues forever with no deadlock. Another solution to this problem is to introduce an arbitrator that determines who can eat. 
In our analogy, this would be like the philosophers requesting permission from a waiter to pick up the chopsticks in front of them. The arbitrator can be implemented as a simple mutex that must be taken prior to reaching for the first chopstick. For example, let's say Hypatia is the first to go. She asks the waiter if she can eat, and the waiter gives her permission. So the mutex is decremented, and Hypatia picks up both chopsticks in any order. She eats for a while and returns the chopsticks. Only after she puts the chopsticks down does she notify the waiter, which sets the mutex back to 1. Notice that while this works as a strict solution to preventing deadlock, it essentially eliminates any benefit we might gain from executing parallel tasks, as it allows only one task to execute at a time. I'm sure there are more complicated versions of this solution to allow for more than one task to execute at a time, but we'll stick with the simple version for now. I'm not going to show you this solution in code, because that's going to be your challenge. Here is the full Dining Philosopher's challenge written as an Arduino sketch for free RTOS. Instead of two tasks, we now have five, and they all call the same function. In that function, they try to take the left chopstick, take the right chopstick, and eat for a while. When they're done, they return the chopsticks, and the function exits. If all philosophers get a chance to eat without deadlock, you'll see a done message printed to the terminal. Notice that I add some delays in here to force deadlock to happen. You'll want to leave them in when working on the solution. When I run this, you'll see that all the tasks take their first mutex, and then nothing happens, as the system is caught in a deadlock. Your challenge is to implement both the hierarchy solution and the arbitrator solution to prevent deadlock from occurring. My solutions for this challenge can be found in a link in the description. Good luck! I have to imagine those philosophers are getting a little bit hungry right now. In the next lecture, we'll look at another nasty concurrency bug known as priority inversion, and how it almost ended a Mars rover mission.